We're about to do some work on this old rig, but first I'm here to tell you, you're running out of time. That's right. If you are wanting to order the OG shirt, all right, on our pre-order, today is the last day. Tomorrow morning, when I wake up in my cute little onesie that I sleep in, shoo boo 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 I'm gonna go on the website and I'm gonna take those down where they're no longer available for pre-order. Hey, yeah! That's right, last chance, all right? They're never gonna be printed again. If you want one, you better get one, and that's it. Just playing, that's not really it. Is it ever, is it ever that simple with me? No, it's not. Once we close the pre-order, I told y'all it's probably gonna take like three to four weeks to get them back and we're gonna start shipping them out. If you are ready for something right now, you wanna go to www.puddingsfabshop.com right now and order something available for the first time ever, sitting on your ass won't finish your project hoodies. It's getting cold out, y'all. If you wanna stay warm in style, uh, these ain't gonna be printed again for a while. It's our first time to ever do them. But don't worry, got a couple other things for you. Cause you gotta get them projects done during the winter. No excuses. So we're gonna do some long sleeve t-shirts right there. The sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Long sleeve edition. Right there. The long sleeve mama didn't raise no punk. And right there, you gotta have the classic logo on the long sleeve guys. Boy, you put that sucker on, it's gonna help keep you warm underneath the flannels, almost the perfect combo of body warmth retention needed for adequate work still on a project. Y'all know we don't stock long sleeve cold type stuff very often, so when we do stock it, no, I don't get a lot of it. I actually get a very small amount of it. Uh, so once these are gone, I don't plan on doing another run, so. Once they're gone, they're pretty much gone until we probably do them again next year, I think. On top of all that, we still have the Yeehaw, Travel All, Truck, and Datsun, and Torola. We still have most of them kind of in stock, I do believe. Not a lot left, but there's a little left if you've been wanting one. Uh, now, as far as this video, we started it off, hmm, starting to piddle with a gas tank, I do believe. For a short bed conversion, you do gotta get you a short bed tank anyhow. Uh, you know, y'all know, I'm not really a fan of using old tanks. Yeah, I know you can clean them. Yeah, I also know you'll still get rust in them and uh, especially for anything popular. If you can get the tank, usually a couple hundred bucks, get you a new tank and a new cinder and uh, you're not fighting old rusty stuff. It's something that I actually highly recommend doing. If there's one place to spend a little money for new parts, we should have left the brakes alone. If you're on a budget, I would have left them brakes because they were looking pretty good. We'll get to that later. But like a tank, old rusty tank, I don't know. One area that's, in my opinion, worth not fighting old rust that's gonna be giving you problems for years to come. I ordered our tank, I got straps, but I forgot to order the cinder. Uh, but we're gonna try to mock this up. If we can put the cinder in with the bed off, then we'll do it. We just gotta see. I don't really know what we're getting into here. I have no clue what it takes to put this on there. Woo, it's gonna be a tight fit is all I know. And I also know we can't do deadly without that cinder. So right now we're pissing in the wind. Don't worry, we got plenty to do on the rear. And our brake line, I'd cut it back there whenever we shortened the frame. And right about where we had to cut it, it was really rusty. Oh, there's my cinders. Sweet. Now look right up here. There's a union right here, which is good. Uh, because I kind of spit shined on that area. That's all clean metal. Uh, it ain't as rusty as it is like this stuff is. So I think we're going to separate here and build a new line back. The luby never hurt. Having the correct size wrench never hurt. That sucker's metric, you gotta be pooping me. The correct size wrench is always super important. Oh man, we may need another correct size wrench for that. Perhaps a little heat to help motivate. There she went. Oh, she's leaking now. Got one clamp right there. There we go. 
Got some quarter right there, some 3 16 that we need for the rear end there. Other than that, we need some fittings. I still ain't sorted this from our move. Is that it? Oh yeah, it is. Got lucky there. I was gonna say, I know I got a bag in there though with some fittings that's right on top. I ain't got a new tube nut this size, so we'll have to restore this one like so and use it. Salvage old tube nut. Slide on, new tube nut. Clamp your tube in the clamper. Deburr with the deburrer. We're ready to flare here. Give this a smash in. Take that out, go for round two. That makes it the double flare. I don't care, right there. Mm. All right, that baby's got a flare on her. I think this should be enough material. Let's go start working it into place. It's kind of straighten her out. Ain't got enough uh, strength to bend that right there at the end. A little jog in it, you dummy. I jogged it without the tube nut down there. <laughs> Cut that off and redid that, this time with the tube nut down there. And we're gonna start to mock her back into place here. Yeah, give me one thread. That impact take care of the rest. <laughs> Told you. Snug. Ooh, tricky. Remove that old piece. And this was going through there. We may just stay on this side of the box. I don't see no reason we can't just clamp to right here to support it. Never mind. They call me backtracking Bobby. Definitely easier to just pull that out and slide it through all that. Once you get that mocked up and clamped up and tightened up, uh, then you can realize you didn't run it through your C notch and you can take it off and do it for the third time. This is why they call me triple time and Tommy. Third time's the charm, baby. Oh, repeat Ricky is making some progress now, baby. All right, do that, clamp enough, and you have to put your bolt in there because you strip out your threads in your frame. But don't worry about that, that's okay. The sucker is ran down, and it looks per near the perfect length, guys. I did not cut that down. And we need a tube nut to go right here. And being the smart individual I am, I cut the old one in half so we can't use it. So let's go do a little scavenging. Ain't gonna do it without the heat, is it? Oh, still won't do it. Man, oh man. There it goes. If we ever do something with a short wide frame, we'll need to build another brake line. That's okay, I'm a specialist at this point. Also, I forgot we got a short wide here with a tank that we can reference for installing ours. Speaking of reference, as that cools down, uh, let's do a little reference here. Seventy-nine and a half. Seventy-nine and a half. That's a true short bed right there. I mean, I don't know how much closer it needs to match. I just wanted to show that because. Uh, some people, I, I think it's the angle of the picture, guys, and people are like, man, that bed looks shorter than a short bed, and a lot of the pictures and stuff. And I think the other thing was, when I had mocked this up, I just threw the bed on there. So that was really close to the cab, where if you look at the before picture when it was a long bed, it's got like a two and a half inch gap in between there. Mine only had like a five eighths gap. So maybe that was it, I don't know. But it is the length of a short bed. Do not be fooled. I'm gonna restore this, and then we're gonna go over there and flare it.
restored. Yeah. That looks good. We can make that work. Checking them bibs to see if there's some shit in there because I about pooped myself. Excuse my language. Oh, he disappeared. Where'd you go in such a fast time, buddy? I was going through here and a snake came across there. He was not a short little guy either. There ain't no way he disappeared. He was making a noise. I don't think it was a venomous snake, guys. I looked like he had round eyes. You're probably just looking for the mice in here. When that sucker's about four inches away from your hand and you ain't ready for them, they'll give you quite the surprise. Where did it go? It's in this toolbox somewhere and I need to be looking in it. I'm not a fan of that. He was coming across here. Maybe he's seen the rubber hose and he thought it was his friend. Oh, snakey! Perfect drawer opening device. He had to slither around to the back side or something. I was going through these and I heard a... It wasn't a rattlesnake. He was just making a weird noise, guys. And I was like, what is, why is this toolbox making a noise? And I looked over and here it come. Well, that's a good feeling. <laughs> we got a snake in the tool room. Damn ninja snake. It was right there. I ran to get the camera. I ran back. Gone. I don't know what we should be doing right now. Burn this SOB down, I reckon. Yeah, I don't know what kind of Houdini snake we're messing with here. But I checked all through that. I checked underneath there. I checked through that. I checked through that. I checked through everywhere he should have been able to get to in that short amount of time I was gone. He ain't here. I was looking for brake line clips and I remembered I'd put them over here. So I guess we just got a pet snake now. That's good. A claw hammer action. Much as I don't want to, these ones are rusty and crusty. We're gonna have to rebuild them as well. Snug. Building brake lines. It ain't fun, but it's gotta be done. That baby's twisting and rusted. And she can't be trusted. So let's lop them. We'll take the wheel and tire off. We'll get into our rear brakes. We'll rebuild it. Then we'll have new wheel cylinders to build to where everything's just perfect. Ha! Ha ha! Drums, beautiful. Not scarred up, nice and smooth. Plenty of shoes left. Them babies had been serviced at one point, guaranteed. And uh, yeah, still got some paint on the springs, guys. Really, we don't have no reason to be rebuilding these. We could put the new wheel cylinder on, pop that back on and roll. Uh, if you were doing super budget friendly, that's what I would recommend. Again, we're in here. I know what I plan on doing with this truck, even though I ain't told y'all yet. And I wanna make it right, right. So since we are in here, we're just gonna make it all fresh and new. See how bad these whip me. Dummy, I was worried about popping that clip instead of just undoing it down there. We're off to a solid start. Two bolts will pull your wheel cylinder for you. What I just thought about, mm, owls, don't they kill snakes? Owls kill damn anything. That old one out, we can plop our new one in. You know, it's not easy to get this wheel cylinder, guys, ready to go in here. It was not easy because I had threw it away on accident. That's right. I've had all kinds of parts boxes from the S10 stuff and the C10 stuff or whatever this is. And last weekend, as I cleaned up the shop, 
I went through all the stuff and I thought I unboxed what I needed and I threw out the boxes. Well, I threw out one box that had the brake parts in the bottom of it, come to find out. So yeah, I was just out there doing dumpster diving for a good minute looking for the proper box. Ain't nothing wrong with a little good old fashioned dumpster dive, okay? I have found plenty of good stuff in dumpsters. Don't doubt me. Nine! Apparently I got a kit for everything. We're gonna get a new adjuster in there even? How fancy. Look at that purdy unit. That ain't that, dummy. That's what we need. Hey, look at that purdy unit. There we go. The adjuster actually ain't bad. But looks like they sent me the kit for everything. Our green spring. Is that this one? Close enough. And then we got a parking lever assembly. However, if that don't get us this piece and we need it. We'll pop that clip. That drops out the back side. Pop it on. And now it's on like Donkey Kong. Looks like that goes there. And that should go down in there some way or another. Oh, we got the wrong side here. We need that one that indents the correct way so that can actually sit down there. Very nice. This baby's got gold. I like it. Goes with my glasses. That's style. Timeless style. Hmm. Now that intermingles to that. About like so. And got a few springs that go on here. That red one right there. I reckon that drops in there and hooks on to that. I know there's some secret to this that I just don't know. So all I know to do is Try to redneck it until we figure it out. Hey, that's pretty simple. Or we could just use our brain and look at it and go, hey, how would this work? We may just simply put it together before we ever even put it into place. Don't start getting too logical now. Got my poop colored spring hooky thing on there. I think we take old Blackie here, our good spring. Drop it down and about like so. I'm gonna hook that to that. There. Every bit of that just fell apart. Let's pop that together and try again. Hold together. Don't forget to put your little pusher thingies in there, a little pusher rod. Got both of them lined up and started. These kits have been coming with springs that are longer than the factory ones. Why do they do that? Does anyone know? The S10 was like that. This one's like that. Are they doing it for a reason other than bad manufacturing? I don't see why you would need more spring there. Oh crap, I didn't put the little pusher bar in there. This thingy majigger. Apparently we gotta reuse the spring for it because it don't come with a new one. There we go. Get them close. Almost. <laughs> hey, it's magic. That's how easy a normal spring goes. I think we're together there. Here we got our big old uh, brake drum. That baby came painted, which I'm a fan of. She's got about the right amount of drag as is, so I don't think we actually got to adjust on anything. I did not mean to pop that out there, but I'm glad I did, because I was trying to adjust on it some and it was stuck. So I had to put it in the vise and pop it loose, and then we'll just slap it back together. And guys, if you're gonna be messing with uh, drum brakes, I know I'm terrible at them, but if you do get a break 
plier kind of tool set thing. It will make your life easier. It also make your life easier if you put the adjuster where it goes. There we go. I adjusted it out of here. I like that a little better. So this side is DUN. She's done. We'll go ahead and pop our little clips here. We just fold over a little bendy style. Come on. It's got that rock guard. It's got that rock guard on there because it's fancy. We need to do the same side as far as our brakes go to this passenger side. Side, except we got a little curveball going on on this side. Get out of there. Keep hearing noises and I know it's that snake plotting on me. I'm gonna find you. I got a plan tonight. I'm gonna take some sticky traps and I'm gonna ca catch me a mouse. Then I'm gonna use the mouse to catch me a snake. So when I had opened up this side, uh, I know that looks really wet right there, but that's actually dried up and it's kind of glazed over. And you can see someone had put some new seals in there. I mean, those, those suckers are like shiny new looking. And I'm not convinced that's leaking because none of it is actually coming from around the seal is, but it could be coming from around the outside of it possibly. So I don't know guys. I'm just thinking since we're here, we might as well do it kind of thing. We got to put a rear diff gasket on this thing anyhow, cause it's been leaking and still is leaking. So I ordered that gasket. I ordered that axle seal, uh, but we don't have neither currently. Everything's going really good of getting this rear end tightened back together here. So we'll just finish up this side. and At some point, we'll make it to that side. Who knows when, maybe never. And we're gonna start with a brake line. Now I done cut us a piece, kind of roughly what we're gonna need, give or take an inch, all right? Could be too short. These lines are smaller. Uh, our big one running back there is quarter inch, but once we get to our T of our brake hose, that actually drops down to 3 16 line. So that's what we're going with. Going back with, give it a flare, don't care. We'll drop our tube nut, and we'll probably go work from the wheel cylinder towards the uh, brake hose. To start here, we're gonna be coming out at an angle, but we need to kind of turn and do the dangle, and then swoop around this stuff. Yeah, this will be fun. Oh, get the hell out of here. I put, the, God bless America. Oh yeah, don't forget to put your tube nut on guys. That's all that matters. The direction does not. Flip that around real quick. Luckily, that's not a very big bend, so I was able to bend it straight and then re-bend it. We just get to start working that baby down into place. That socket slash hammer did really good for giving me a little radius around that. Basically get to kind of guess, that's going about that far in. Going above that's actually gonna give us a little extra material. So I'm gonna mark that right at that and that should be pretty close. Pull it off there, trim her down, give it a flare. Give it a tube nut first, not installed backwards. That's nice. That's real nice. And it's pretty tight right there. Come on guys, that's looking a whole lot better, ain't it? Like I said, what was in there was not bad, but is what is in there better? Probably if someone else would have installed it. Now with me, I probably got 12 springs backwards, the brake hose is gonna leak, and who knows what else. Now nah, I'm just playing guys. Uh, that's looking nice. As you can see, rebuilding. It's nice these, I wonder if, yeah, they all have the union underneath there. The short bed had it as well. So you know if you got rusty lines back here, uh, it's really not that bad to do. As far as draining this and tearing into this, I think we're gonna leave it alone for now. We're not gonna tackle it until we have parts on hand. 
uh, but we have plenty we can still do back here. Now one thing, we could mount this sucker real quick where it ain't being old floppy Joe, flop, floppy Joe. Pop that, flip flop that, that's Lucy. Cut it at the caboosey, that's its backside. Little sprucey with the looby dooby, and holy cow, to slide that in there is gonna be a task. Ah. Gosh darn it. Pulled the spring loaded clamp. We're just gonna replace this sucker. It's rock solid. Watch this. Did you hear that thing? Lucky we didn't go through the damn insulation up there. Here, snaky, snaky, snaky. It'd be in here coiled up with the hoses. Hanging out with my hoses. Got us a decent piece right here. Don't cut her too short now. I know you're in here, and I will find you. If I do find you, you're either eating a kick or an uppercut, one of the two. Pop that on there. I'm actually gonna run it to the outside of the frame because that's threaded right there. Yeah. Come on, come on. There we go, that's in there. Got a little flop to her. She can come out and just mount up right there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Now those are coming apart a lot better than they did last week for us. However, I did have to torch the one off, so we got a couple different sizes. So I just ordered us some new ones online. Mismatching bugs me. And the threads on them old ones are pretty buggered up. The problem with these ones are they are slightly longer, which means we gotta give her a little custom trim job. Oh, they're matching now, except for where I cut them at different lengths at the bottom, but psh, don't worry about that. That side installs just like this side, no big deal. Next thing we're gonna look at are shock extenders uh, for lowering this rig. And I ordered these, they're super cheap. They're so cheap that they come with hardware or some of the hardware. This one has two washers and a nut. This one has a nut and washer, we got one bolt. Should have had two of these and they should have hardware as well. Good quality kit. Great using these things already, but we're gonna make them work. We are gonna use our bolts to mock this thing into place. We're gonna grind a little metal smooth. Can you, anyone guess why? If you guess they're about to become permanent, well, ding, 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 you're a winner. I know, oh, yeah, I had to cut that bolt out of there. Cause somebody uh, put them in there backwards with a head facing that side. So yeah, you gotta cut that to get that out of there. That's good. I'm just on a roll with this thing, ain't I? That's all cleaned up. Now that bolt's loosey goosey in there. So I'm gonna put it in there. Then Hold it all the way up like that. Then I'll look at our gaps on each side and I'm gonna split the difference as much as possible about like so. I'm gonna tack that sucker on. Tack the back, get a C-clamp. We're gonna clamp this up here and hopefully collapse that enough where we get them touching. She's mocked up, tacked up, our bolt stuck. Old claw hammer Clayton. Go ahead and slide on our new shock because we're gonna have to figure out down here, I was gonna say, cause that's gonna need some spacer somehow. 
unless you just want your shock up in there doing the dingle ling around. Good quality kit. I love it. Get your favorite uh, sockets out. We may end up regretting this. Let's see here, that sleeve out of there. Can we shove that in there? I believe we're gonna be able to, and that is a nice tight fit. We need to do that because this is 5 8 That sleeve was for 9 16 The holes over there are 5 8 So if we wanna get a bolt in there that fits snug and ain't flopping, it needs to be a 5 8 I ain't got no 5 8 bolt. Uh, so we'll mock it up with this half inch bolt. That's because we're gonna have to figure out how to put spacers. Now I can already tell that's 3 8 Pretty dang close. Same with that side. 3 8 spacer on each side should do it. So now we need to find some material we can slide a 5 8 bolt into to then cut down to some 3 8 spacers. Or when we go to the hardware store later, we may be able to find some. I know the one I like to go to, it does uh, have little spacers. Here, snakey, snakey, snakey. He's not in here. What's that there? Ah, just a hair too small. So obviously guys, you could do uh, washers if you didn't have spacers or material like I do not. I don't want to redneck it with washers. I'd like to find a spacer. No, another thing we could do if we can't couldn't find anything, we could take some 3 8 plate because that's the thickness we need. And we could cut out little squares or something, drill a hole, a 5 8 hole. We could actually like tack them to our shocks and then it would actually be, or not our shocks, or brackets we just welded on, and then that would thicken it up. But like I said, I'm gonna look for spacers later. If I can't find any, we're gonna have to go from there. I mean, hell, stuff's missing from everything else. Why would it not be missing from this too, you know? Who should think a kit to extend your shocks should come with everything? That's just crazy. Well, it's getting pretty out here. That's right. I left to find hardware, and eventually, I found hardware and what we need. Uh, it took a little longer than expected. I did swing by the parts house too, and I did get our axle seal and our rear diff covers. And I also did not get as far as I wanted to get today. I feel like I got nothing done. That's all right. We'll get out here super early tomorrow and we're gonna have a better day. Hopefully not with the distraction hour of trying to find a snake. Oh, I gotta put my traps out. Y'all thought I was crazy. I was literally putting out glue traps Went to put one down, and guess whose head was sticking out? Hey there, Snakey. Don't you get me, and I won't get you. There he goes. All right. I tried to play nice. I was going to take him by the tail and toss him, but he wanted to say, Wacha! at me. Now, I don't like snakes, okay? And I'm not a professional snake handler, but I will whip an ass for being in my shop unannounced. Gotta be hiding behind the tires. We don't want him going back that way any. Just want him out of the shop. He looked like he was headed towards out of the shop, actually. That was twice, guys, today that my hand was within six inches of his face. I literally went to set that down over there and boop, he popped his head out on me. And I don't see him behind there. I don't see him under the fridge either. He's gotta be there somewhere, all right? I'm telling you, he's a sly devil. Found some mice turds. I could understand why he's in here. He might be in the refrigerator. We're about to look, but did he get past us? I don't know. Nope, there he is. He's in there, coiled up, looking right at us. Y'all see him there? Let me get a look at them eyes, buddy. Yeah, that's around as around can be. That snake ain't venomous. That's a good thing. Safety first here. Here, buddy, buddy. Don't you be snipping at me. You hear that noise he's making? I told y'all earlier that sucker was making a rattling noise. He's ready to fight now. Uh, the concrete guy here, Lang, he told me that sometimes a pygmy rattler will crossbreed with some of these little rat snakes and stuff, and that they'll make a hissing noise, or they'll use their tail and they'll tap on stuff. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that sucker's ready to fight now. Look at him, he's like, who wants some? Who wants some? 
I'm in strike position. Did he get you? Oh, that's his tail making that, or his tongue. That's his tongue a humming. That little sucker scares me every time he does that. Be serious. Even if he comes out of there, I don't know how I'm gonna get a hold of him other than to grab the sucker. But then he's gonna try to bite me. I'm sure to scream and throw him. It ain't gonna be good for nobody. You can't come over here for a side attack. No, nope, that was not his tongue because he was just making the noise and his tongue was in his mouth. So he does wiggle his little tail somehow. <laughs> I only got one idea on me. I'm about to suck you up with a shot back. He retreated. Yeah, he's underneath there now. A lot harder to get to. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's like, who wants some, pal? I'm right here. He is feisty. I got him now. But he, he ain't letting go. He's strong. Well... I guess we're gonna sit here until he decides to let go. Just let go, you stubborn thing. I'll throw you out of here and you'll be on your way. All right. I finally wiggled our friend out of there. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna get rid of this sucker and we'll be back on uh, the project in the morning. We're gonna turn these down on our Pot County lathe here real quick. As long as we can get the tape off there, we'll be in good shape. Got up early and got out here. We did catch a couple of mice, okay, so maybe that'll help keep the snakes away. As far as this, just going and marking dead nuts at three-eighths around here. I wish we could have found a longer piece of material because then we could have put it in our evolution saw. But we'll take what we can get. And after we get a few marks, uh, I'm taking my tape right up to that mark and then we know where to cut. This here's my fine line specialty tape. We use it for our precision jobs here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut us four of these. Ha, 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 ha. Once we get all four cut, we'll do a quick little clean up. Quick little deburr, and no, those are not perfect, but luckily for us, they're going against some rubber bushings on a shock. I think they'll be okay. Better than the spacers that it came with, you know what I mean? That's what I was worried about. <laughs> I don't know we're gonna get that 5 8 bolt through there now. I ain't gonna have enough hands to try to shove up on that. Oh, let's take it off the top, dummy. Right in our second bushing. Oh, nice snug fit. A looby dooby and it'll go in. I wonder if we could weld that or if we're gonna have to pull that back off. Man, that should be plenty of welder room. I laid our shock forward, little glove there for protection. And we're gonna do a little welding. Whoop! Looked like we had a little friend living in here. And a couple dirt daubers, of course. You did not want to pull the bushing out of there. Now we gotta get it back in there. That's great. Oh, it actually ain't gonna fight us too bad. That was way easier than I thought. Good deal. Good deal. And that's a pro tip right there, guys. If you're gonna make a mistake, make one that's easy to fix, okay? Make an easy mistake on purpose. 
This would be better if we had nylocks, uh, but we do not. Now, at the same time, I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that backing off. You just can't smoke her to Alabama because we ain't got a metal sleeve in there, so you gotta be kind of pay attention. If that ever backs off, you'll know. Your stuff will start clanking or it'll fall apart, one of the two. Man, them shocks got some booty on them. Oh, <clears throat> Little custom fabric cobbling. We finally got some shocks on this rig. Probably would have been easier to just do the research and figure out a shock that was the same eyelet designs, but shorter length overall. We could have put it back in the factory place, or maybe, yeah, that probably, doing that also, guys, gets the shock at a little bit better angle where it's not laid over so much. Because when we set that thing back down within the factory spot, we would have started losing our uh, angle. Could have been the reverse redneck two link. Now, as we go to pull this, you want to do it right here on the table with all your tools. That way, if it makes an absolute mess everywhere, it just lubricates your tools really good for you. Hey, yo, that was pretty good. I, I caught most of it. Buying got 456 gears with a limited posit track. Obviously, we ain't got no uh, posi traction in this rig. 1443. 14 divided by 43. 326. Is that a gear ratio that came in these? 326s? No, there's like a 336, and there's like 308. So I didn't know of a 323. Yeah, 326. Hold on. 43 divided by 14. I did 14 divided by 43. 307s. You ain't gonna win no drag races. You ain't gonna have a torque monster, but you got a good overall gear. You should be able to, you know, run out on the highway with a 307 and uh, lose every race with a 307. Uh, good gear for a cruiser. This baby just got a turbo 350 transmission. So you got three gears that end in a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, now, if we had overdrive, this would be bad. We'd be needing to drop down to 373s perhaps somewhere in there is all this blue paint factory got some yellow paint blue paint yellow mark blue over there blue everywhere all the fluid coming out of there looks good i don't really see no metal sparkles maybe one or two in there yeah just a little bit of uh, shiny pieces down in the bottom don't worry about that guys we're gonna fix what we gotta fix we'll service that and that'll work until it don't that drains over there over here i pulled our brake stuff off real quick and we got four bolts hit them with some looby dooby and we'll get them pulled they're a little cratty so that one's giving my hand the ultimate vibration sensation those should help retain this our backing plate uh but we got some work to do in the center well, i do think we should be able to pop that backing plate loose yep a little claw hammer motivation will take care of that i've never actually been into a gm rear end before like this as far as taking it apart that right there we got our little bolt that's going to retain our pin then i think our pin comes out and then that's gonna allow our axles to get where we can get the C-clips. Pull that sucker, and here comes our pin. I notice it's got some flat spots on the sides, and also it's drilled, so obviously it's only gonna let you put it in there one way because of that bolt. I shove that axle in and our C-clip right there, well, it, uh, it fell right out. Here we go. Yep, and our axle's free. And that was just a backing plate. We did not have to get that. That don't retain it in any way. I'm not convinced this is actually leaking, guys. I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that shortly before this thing was parked, someone put new seals in it because it was leaking. They did not clean up the existing mess because I know you're thinking that looks wet. 
but it's not. That stuff is set up and it's hard. Just as soon as you push on it, you can see it kind of goes flatter of a color. It don't keep that sheen. And I have not found anywhere where there's actual like wet fluid coming out of there. It definitely was not leaking around the seal. There's nowhere that indicates this was leaking. So it could have only been leaking around there. I just don't think that was the case. I think we're in here really for no reason. <laughs> Direct hit. Uh, you ever have that pain that just so sharp and instant you can't even make a noise? I'm trying to knock that uh, end wrench on there to squeeze them clamps where we could pop that out of there, but I forgot we're not actually hooked up to nothing, so that comes right out of there. <laughs> That's good. At least I got a good smack to my finger. Yeah, that was not leaking. We were perfectly fine. We were perfectly fine. Now we've got a uh, situation. Stuff a couple rags in there to kind of help protect that. Yeah, that stuff's been dried on there. That's all it was. Whenever they swap that seal out, they just never clean their mess. Better safe than sorry, I reckon. Yeah. Cleaned her up a little bit. Our seal's got a little rubber piece uh, around there, so I'm gonna just lube it just a hair. Just wet that whistle a little bit. Drive that new seal in. We're ready to go back together. Took our backing plate outside, scraped it, wire wheeled it, made it where we can identify if we have a leak now. Yeah, tighten all four of them. Clean the bolt heads, can't look sloppy now. Speaking of sloppy, I might have to go clean that. The whole backside's a mess. Fried on the wire wheel and she's ready. Ready like Betty spaghetti. When you put it in, go straight and steady. There she went. Smooth like butter. I reckon we just put our C-clip back on. Shove it that away. Shove that one that away. Looking good, looking good. Slide that sucker right back in. And put our keeper bolt right back in. Torque it to proper torque. Sound proper to me. Not sure where I put the super scraper. Uh, lost it. It's around here somewhere. We gotta get this cleaned up, and then we'll be ready to go back together. Uh, looks like they did a little silicone and a gasket, which it was leaking. We get it clean enough. I think we're gonna just try straight gasket. A little scotch bright on the roll lock will uh, expedite that process. And luckily, holding that against me, got my shirt smelling really good, like used gear oil. So when I throw it in the hamper tonight, my wife will really appreciate the aroma it brings to our house. Don't forget to do that, guys. The ladies love it. That's shiny enough to attract a raccoon right there. Here we go. Work all them down and uh, yeah, I think we may try to clean on this as well. Now that definitely was leaking. That's wet right there. Once that all dries, it should look a lot better than it did. I'm to lube her up to do that. We're gonna use a pressurized system. Something a little different than we've ever done before. We're gonna make a mess. So in theory, if we put that there, and we take our hose up into the rear end where it needs to be, with a little pressure, we could get that from there to there. Cut us a small hole, and we'll simply install our pressurizer. I'm gonna tip her up a little bit, give her a little air. If this bottle explodes, we'll know it. And I hear it doing something in there. 
Looks like we're getting some fluid. I don't know how much we're really shoving. Go, baby, go. Got rid of the court, so we're about halfway there. Well, my arms are getting tired just doing this number. Come on. You got it, baby. Perfect timing. That was the exact amount it needed. Where's my plug? Where's my plug? She's flowing back out. Well, that's one way to service it, guys. Uh, that is a lot faster than uh, using gravity or anything else. I ain't gonna lie. It just, it's a little risky to do. That plastic jug was not looking happy. All right, slap the brakes together on this side. I went a little quicker, two things. Uh, one, I got really good practice because I put it all together and then realized I never hooked up the parking brake cable, which means I got to take it all apart and do it again. Extra practice never hurt nobody. Then two, I realized I had the adjusters on the wrong sides, so I had to flip-flop them. No big deal. That's our brake line. Cleaned up majority of my mess because it was getting messy, and I thought about it. Uh, let's go ahead and weld this when we got the welder close by. I think our exhaust is going to work just fine for what we're doing. Nothing fancy. And let's take a little hop and skip across the old salvage yard. In our short bed, I remember seeing a drive shaft up in there right there. Let's reach in there and hope not to find another snake. Oh. Ooh, still got good U joint in her. Wondering if this ain't the factory one from this truck. Because if it is, in theory, it should slide right into place into our long bed here that now identifies as a short bed. Roughly 70 inches. Roughly 56 inches. 56 plus 14, which is what we cut out the middle, equals 70, which is what that one was. We got us a drive shaft. I didn't even think about that whenever we started doing all this. Sometimes you just get lucky. You know, it'd be lucky. Lucky would be if our uh, yoke was in a little bit better shape than this. That U-joint's a little crunchy. So what's that mean? I think I'll just order us a couple of U-joints for this rig and we'll end up rebuilding it at some point, slapping it in here. If we were real lucky, it'd be good to go, but that's not the case. It shouldn't hold itself up like that. Here we come back to our uh, short ride here. Brought my notepad. Oh, I see. Well, there's a hole in the frame where that's supposed to land. Seven and three sixteenths. I'll be honest, I don't know if uh, this crap's gonna line right up or not in there. There's one. Here's my little schematic for the front one. Where's a rear one? This is one I'm not too sure about. Got us some rough numbers anyhow. There's so much crap going on behind the scenes this last week or so, guys, that I just can't get enough done in a dang day. And I got somewhere to be in about two hours or so, which does not help get anything done. Now, I'd imagine the front one would be the same. My rough measurement here is within a 16th. So this should be good. The issue then is that from back in here, is where our next one should be. Of course, we're plated there. So even if we drill them holes from the other side, it'll be real easy to get nuts on there. Took the speed square, don't care. Bumped it against there, gave us a mark. Squared down this side. This line should be pretty close to our cab mount. And down there, I took three measurements. Uh, the first one is for our first bolt, roughly three and a half. Second was five. And 11 sixteenths. That should be the big hole that the strap goes through. Then the third one, seven and seven eighths. Right at four and a half inches. That was a little wonky down there. Yeah, we're about an eighth inch off. Some real precise stuff here we're doing, you know. Hey, I seen someone ask in a comment why I use stuff like this speed square. That's a carpentry tool uh, for what I do. And I guess a simple answer would be because it works. Except for when you hold it on there crooked and your line's a little crooked, but don't worry about that. So roughly our bracket should end up there, 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 and there with a hole in there. Give or take a there or two. 
Now, I don't know what the tank cost or this cinder. These are roughly, let's say 40 bucks. A tank, can't even lie to you. Don't know the exact price. But what I do know is having a peace of mind from knowing you ain't gonna be sucking up dirty crud, uh, having to change filters, get trash in your carburetor, and possibly be stuck on the side of the road, priceless. Big O-ring drops down on there. Your seal, that has two tabs. It's only gonna let that sit a certain way. The locking ring was a little loosey-goosey, kinda shifted around, but she's tightened down, locked in, kinda centered it up. I don't know what that was. I was, I was painting for gold, baby. I do not think getting this in there is gonna be any fun. We're gonna get our straps ready because we gotta replace these. Breakdown's easy peasy. Here's our new straps. They appear to roughly be the correct length. We've got to attach that to that, except we ain't got rivets that's gonna work for that. We do have some Phillips head, little quarter 20 bolts though. Work them like you love them. And I'm gonna flap attack the head of them a little smooth. They do stick up. I don't know how much this is gonna affect us or not. I just know the rivets on that side were really flat and flush. Not to be confused with fat and plush. We'll take it. We can probably go ahead and get this fuel hose out of our way because it's gonna have to be replaced. That sucker is clamped right there, huh? He got it. Three eighths, that's your supply. Five sixteenths, that's your return. Either way, they're both out of our way. So I have some fresh hoses on here. I can get this above this, but I can get this down to that. Or I need another me to help hold something. One the 12. That is pretty close. And we're actually on the safety locks right there. Not that I'm too worried about that. I guess we ought to strap that to the tank so then we can lower it down and try to pull the bracket back to there. Probably want to get that one started. Then we can get this one mocked up and then figure out where exactly we're going to be drilling. And I don't think this is going to work with this. I think we're going to have to move this or our tank's going to be hitting that. Nice fit. A little plastic guard that goes on the bottom of our tank. It, uh, these lips aren't fitting on the aftermarket one. So we're going to trim these down. That's custom. That's a little nicer. Oh yeah, baby. Gave that the custom trim job as well to get around all of our uh, bolts we added. Got her mocked up and got a bolt started on that end. It's a good thing we didn't trust our marks. Our center one was pretty spot on, but not so much our other ones. We were a little off. I went and looked at our roller frame down there and the top of that bracket is basically flush with right where that edge rolls right in there. So we need to pick up about like so, and then mark where we think our stuff needs to go. Probably easier said than done. Let's go with a two before. That's pretty well what she needs right there. We need a big hole in that area. 
I'm gonna put that bit down in there. I'll try to use it to mark the frame. I'm gonna try to get all four of them. Give her a waller for a dollar. Not sure why I thought this was a good idea. Definitely should have used a hole saw. I knew she had it in her. Drilled her two holes on the front and drilled them all the way through as you can see. We got a 3 8 bolt, but I did a half inch on the front, 5 8 on the back, because I'm not very good at drilling straight through. That gave us a little wiggle room. I don't have proper 3 8 bolts, but I got some starter bolts, so that should be the correct thread, and some washers, so we're gonna see if we can't get her mocked up anyhow. About got her whooped now. Which is good because this thing about whooped me. Got them tight. Now up here, I drilled us another one down on the bottom. There's already a hole there that's pretty dang close, so we just went with it. And uh, you know what they say, if three won't hold it, the four that were there never would have. So three will work. Now I need to get proper bolts. Now I also got to go do some running. So we got to go get the proper hardware real quick. In the last two days, kids, we learned we really need to up our bolt selection around here. So I mocked these up and I done sleeve this one. The problem, if we just run that through there, and then we tighten it down, we're gonna just pull in our uh, boxing plate here. That's gonna make it weaker, obviously. And it's also not really gonna let us tighten that down real well as that gives. Easy solution is to sleeve it and just sleeve in with some of that material we found earlier will work. It's a nice tight fit. That's never coming out. We'll mark her right up against that where we know exactly where to cut. That bottom's out at a flush fit. And you could weld these things if you wanted. We got our last one there uh, started or mocked up, I mean. Here we go, all three bolts are started. Man, oh man, that tank was whipping me a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, there was no need to do any of the measuring from the start. The only thing we really need to know is how high to go here as far as this bracket. Other than that, slap your straps on and just start mocking it up into place. If you ain't boxed your frame, then obviously that's a lot little easier for you to do. If you had a fish plate in there, you're drilling through a little more material. That may get a little tricky. Uh, but if you have boxed your frame like I did, not knowing what I was getting into here. There's always a way to make it work, guys. Popped our wire on on top of the tank. Got our hoses hooked up underneath here. Got our new ground hooked up there. And used the same clamp that we unbolted right there. Just reused it right there, exact same clamp. She's looking pretty good. Got a little research to do on the filler hoses. Unless we want to reach up inside the bed to fill this sucker. We got to get some with a 90 on them to kind of bring that out like this. Like someone may have cut them. And I did just look up the gas tank, it was bugging me. It's like $123. Then I looked at the cinder and I was wrong about it. They were double. They were like 80 bucks. The cinder was like 80 bucks, but the tank was like 120. So for 200 buckaroos, more or less, a little more, you get you a whole new tank set up. Still worth it, uh, whether it whipped me today or not, all right? The whole back has kind of whipped me. I didn't think it was gonna take this long to get where we're at, but here we are. Now as that sun sets, I gotta gather all the trash around here and around the house and get it in our trash can. Trash runs tomorrow. Uh, guys, we'll be back on this thing tomorrow. I think next, moving to the front. Now I know I said we were gonna start at the front, but I was kinda working my way towards the front. Uh, I think this is what's been leaking on our transmission. This is some type of reducer or something, gear changer of some sort that was threaded on that. That's just O-ring seals, alleged, allegedly, because I don't think it is, in our transmission. A little flat spot, it just retains like that. You'll see when we put it back together. I'm pretty sure this is where we're leaking. Now there is a seal on the inside there that that has to push through. So we could be seal or leaking there as well. And if we are, there ain't much we can do about that uh, besides get another one of these. But the first thing we can try is replacing this O-ring on here 
because uh, I don't think it's doing a very good job. The old sucker's dried up and kind of split in one little area there and a little crunchy. Certainly ain't doing us no favors. That one there may be close. That's a pretty good fit right there. Now I'm not convinced this is our only leak. I think this side may be leaking too, but we're gonna try it. Oh, and apparently that's stripped out. That's good. Ah, snug it with the fingers. That's gonna be enough to let us know if it's leaking or not anyhow. You know what don't help that? Having a big old counterweight that bounces around and wears that out throughout its life. Just saying, kind of stupid design. Now oh, that's good. Now everything's just twisting and turning. Flop here, flop there, flop everywhere. She's back together. If for some reason that don't leak, we'll find a way to uh, secure that piece, but I think it's gonna leak and I think we're gonna be getting back in there to fix all kinds of stuff. Crap, I almost forgot our parking brake cables before we move forward. Just need to put a couple of these to hold this. hook up one side in a regular old clippy clip and then we'll pull all our slack uh, make sure you're in these little hanger thingies there's one there's one up here too you can yank on that and get all your slack now we need to attach that to that only problem is we're a little longer than we used to be well surprise surprise I was about to cut that old cable down and then I remembered once again guys I almost passed on this thing when I bought the blazer he wanted, I don't know, like an extra 500 bucks for this short wide frame and all the extra parts and stuff, I think. And uh, yeah, I mean, drive shaft, we could have cut the one down, but it's nice just to have one and have it done right. And if you went and paid, uh, you'd be spending a couple hundred bucks there, getting it cut down, balanced, all that kind of good stuff. Then like this parking brake cable, yeah, it's not super necessary. We could cut it down, but having it, uh, it's just handy. So there we go. That's how you cut down your parking brake cable. What my plan was, was I'd like to have a smaller one of these, but this is just all I had in stock. I was gonna loop that cable through the other clip, pull it back onto itself and just clamp it down. And that's good enough, guys. Just simply undo everything you just did. Now we're gonna take our other clamp and just hook her up like factory. Woo-wee! That's looking all right. Then that drops back on that. We'll put that on there, tighten her back down. And we made this a little nicer than I thought we were gonna. I'm not sure how tight to set this, but that's got a little to it, but I can tell it's got some tension at the same time. So we're gonna leave it there and adjust if needed. It's a case by case basis. We're gonna start up here with getting our brakes on. And to do that, first things first, we're gonna be replacing our hoses. Not a huge fan of these because they pop in here to the inside, which makes them a little tricky. What I'm gonna do is actually get that back and nut loosened off there, where we can pull that hose and that hard line through to this side, and then we can take it apart out here. A little wiggling and got her loose. She's just finger tight. Be sure to put that nut back on the brake hose pull it back on your hard line so when you replace it it's on there where you can thread it back on now hopefully we can wiggle this that away and do what we need to do get our universal wrench aka our locking pliers come on baby oh yeah she's free never know what you're gonna get with a little brake line i'll finish pulling this sucker here and of course, our new one goes right back on. No big deal. Just pop that sucker back in. Put your little retaining nut on the back. And you are swapped out. Next, we'll get the caliper ready. Simply, simply slide out. Ugh. Simply slide out your bolts. No big deal. Get your little retaining clip thingy. Hook that right there. 
actually hook this side on first and then come around here pop that sucker on and that'll hold that in your little piston of course that one sits there we're ready for install oh bushing got us there we go there we go i know i said the old brakes were fine and would be fine and would perform fine but man as you start to get stuff on the bottom side of these old rigs, these old rusty turds fixed up, looking good like this, it just excites me. Start your two bolts and you're ready to tighten them babies down. I messed up. Before I tighten that down, I meant to clip that in there, which is where it goes. And that's so it'll kind of index that how it needs to be. That's all right. They call me Redo Ricky, so we'll just redo this real quick. Put that in there. You put one bolt in it. I'm going to tighten all that other crap back down, and we're going to quit backtracking. How's that? Looking good. I actually left that loose because when we come over here, we run into a little problem. If we go to actually put that on there, you can tell how it's supposed to hook into place there. Uh, you can see to kind of get that flat, we're starting to hit this stuff up here. So we need to bend on that a little bit to get it to clear where it'll start to clear. Uh, I think our issue is these drop spindles. From the factory, this would have been three inches lower. So you can bet this would be some kind of amount lower. I don't know if it's exactly three, but either way, you wouldn't be having interference from your lines here. And then made the driver's side work, so I know we can do it. Uh, just be careful if you're gonna try this. Uh, Nice and easy does it. You are kind of manipulating on a brake line, okay? So you probably don't want to give her 114%. Grab that, and then we're going to use this and bend a little that away. And that little bit is enough to get us started. And then once it's started, we'll manipulate on it a little more. Lower truck problems, you know? If you want, uh, they do make, you can get little banjo fittings that go onto that and you could get flex lines and stuff like that. But I just like using the factory stuff if we can. If trucks would come with drop spindles from the factory, we wouldn't have this damn problem, okay? All right. She's tight, but that's still aimed kind of right at that. So I'm gonna just try to get it off of it a little bit. And then we'll uh, fine tune it more after we get some weight on it and we can see what's rubbing or what's not rubbing. And here we go. Just tweak it a hair. Down a little bit. It may not look like it, but it is clearing. We're just gonna have to keep an eyeball on that. Make sure it's happy with some weight on the truck. We don't wanna be rubbing holes in our rubber brake hoses, especially on our front brakes. Be going for a, a ride with no stoppy stop. Be hoping whoever rebuilt them drum brakes on the rear 12 times yesterday trying to get them right, finally got them right. We need the rear to stop because the front, we're gonna rub holes in the brake hoses, guaranteed. A little lubrication in these ball joints and uh, I did slap with some cotter pins in them too. And uh, yeah, we're kinda good to go there. Next, we're gonna start looking at stuff like our drag link, gear box, tie rods, you know, all the other fun stuff. I've never watched a Star Wars movie. Uh, I almost forgot to slap these on. And apparently this tab got bent somehow because uh, our shock don't fit in there. Yeah, yeah. Open that up a hair. Perfect. Slap a bolt in there. Up top goes on our stud. And I just ran them down. I actually plan to tighten that with our cross shafts on our A-arms and stuff once we get a little load on the suspension. That'll help get the bushings in a little bit better uh, position to be torqued down. This thing's all there. Get up there. Next, we get to take this lovely piece of equipment apart. This thing is plum filthy, beyond worn out. And we even have to put a new gearbox on this thing since this bottom side is leaking out. Uh, but we need this center bar drag link thingy. We probably need our sleeves for our tie rods as well. 
This ain't gonna be fun. Little wire wheel in and we can actually see some cotter pins. Get out of here. Guys, I don't think I've ever rebuilt stuff on a square body before. I think this is my first time being in on one of these. Yeah. Boop. All right, let's, uh, I guess start impacting. Let's impact our community. Now, since we don't got another one of these, no, that ain't true, we got one out there. That's besides the point. We wanna be real careful with it. That's right. Oh, I'm on a roll, baby. Ow. Try to play that off, but the head of that hammer hit my wrist bone and it hurt. Anyone else want some? We're leaking. Just making a mess everywhere. Hi. That's how it's done, son. Wonder if there's a core on this rig. I bet there is. They said 800 something dollars for a new one. Or like a buck 30 for a reman. Uh, yeah, we'll take the reman, please. I may have been born, but it wasn't yesterday, okay? I'll be damned 800 something dollars. 16 and a quarter. 16 and a 16th. Them are pretty close to each other in length, actually. We're gonna do our clamps, pull these suckers apart so we can grab our sleeves. Just doing a little plumbing. We'll just continue our mess making here. Shout out to Mordsky for the super scraper. I believe they're available at his website. Uh, these things are super handy. They do a great job. How fancy. Inside this thing, solid dirt. I'm gonna clean this out as good as we can. We'll do a little lube in there. We're just gonna run these suckers in. I ain't really in the mood for this. Don't forget one's left hand thread. Be cross thread in them new puppies. 16 and 3 sixteenths. I'd say that's about perfect. As you go to thread these in here, make sure your tie rod gets past your clamp on each one. And you can see how that one goes past it good, and that one does too. Uh, don't have one plumb in there and another one barely hanging on. I say that, but you'd be surprised how many of these things running around. There's one just barely in the clamp. I mean, it's just your steering, guys. What's the worst that could happen? Oopsie daisy. I forgot to rob a, this piece for a little idler arm. We gotta keep this. Got her out of there. I know I said the brakes were pretty runnable. Uh, a lot of these, the ball joints, tie rods, that stuff, it is plumb worn out. It was definitely due for an upgrade. Now next up, we're gonna try to get the gearbox on. I use the old step store right there. Got up in there, made sure the steering wheel, wheel was straight. Made his little mark, so I know if that's pretty well pointing down, we're gonna be pretty close inside. I think I'm gonna put the gearbox on here, and then try to pick it up and shove it over there. Then of course we gotta get all the bolts started. I don't really know what bolt goes where, but we'll figure it out, I think. Oh, well that don't work since that uh, has a flat spot on it. So we'll kinda have to make this work to that, but that looks pretty close anyhow. Oh yeah, got one started. Oh, 
All those uh, lined up really good and started. This one doesn't really act like it wanted any torque on it. So I guess we got us a gearbox here with some bad threads. Uh, so I'll just put a through bolt in there and uh, I think we'll be okay. A few little love taps. I just want to make sure that's going to go on there before we do too much more. Messing with them is my least favorite part, so I don't want to have to backtrack any. Like we get all this together and then find out we can't really get that on there or something. Here's our new uh, Pittman arm. And voila! There's our new uh, idler arm. This baby goes right here. And this one goes here. Uh, that does not come with a new nut. It should come with the new nut, but it don't. That's just my personal opinion, anyhow. Now, I do not have a socket that size, so big old Pop County speed wrench it is. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. I wish we had a socket where we could put the beans to this thing with the impact. It's all right, we don't need no stinking impact. Gearbox is starting to turn. We'll put that between there. We'll put some torque on it. Now it's a good thing I didn't tighten this side and I had a stinking suspicion. Shoved our gearbox this way after starting this one or we could get this reaching a little over this way and then you gotta drop this one on and then you can go up with it. But that up into place, you can't get it all together. Or I couldn't, anyhow. Maybe there's a secret to it. Next is a very crucial detail. Uh, install your stuff correctly. <laughs> Guys, I wasn't paying attention. These are supposed to go in here. Your tie rods go towards the inside. So this piece flips around. Uh, yeah, could you say that? It, it was easy to tell that we're a little off. Look how it turned that wheel. Could you imagine trying to drive like that? This thing would be doing the penguin walk going down the road. Yeah. All right, with that in the proper place finally, let's torque it like we love it. Those are all ready to cotter pin. I kind of eyeball this rotor straight about in there ish set that back straight ish and these should be kind of close not terrible shoot this side over where we can get it started helps if you got the right nut drop that in there i think we're ready to torque all this and cotter pin it and lube it Finished getting the front lubed up. I did have to run and get some more grease. I ran out. That's all right. Good excuse to grab some taco, boy. We were getting hungry anyhow, weren't we? Huh. Well, that's still pretty far from that being actually flush. Got our high performance blue bushings. This thing is practically a pro touring machine. Ready for some high performance corners. They sent us these bushings. They forgot to send us these ones. They attach to the A-arm kind of the same way as this. So that's everything on the front. On the bottom side, they still need to go upstairs underneath the hood, do a master cylinder. After we do that, we need a bleed brakes. We also need to hook up our uh, gearbox, power steering lines, that coupler to our shaft or whatever, a uh, rag joint, whatever you want to call the dang thing. Before we do that, uh, our U-joints came in and with this thing elevated, uh, let's take a look at our drive shaft. Let's take a look at this rusty rig. And I ain't mess with you joints in a minute, uh, so let's let's see how rusty we are. <laughs> Hopefully not as rusty as this drive shaft. 
our slip yoke that goes into the seal of our transmission that you definitely want that rusty. So far, not rusty at all. That clip stuck. She's wedged in there. Don't worry, I got her. And we do have a press, but we also have a, a vise right here. I'm actually gonna try it first, assuming I can fit all this in here. Oh, she's moving some. Got her flush. She's moving some. Oh yeah, I just felt her give. I need to get that cap off somehow. Can't push that way any further. What in the configuration I got going on here, huh? This ain't going so well. I don't know if you could tell. Pull that one cap off. We should be able to wiggle this off somehow. Fun stuff. If it wants to play in the press, we can play in the press. We'll pull that in cap. This one's falling right off. It's not being ornery like our slip yoke. Call me crazy, but that should come out of there somehow, right? I should not have to press that back out the other way. That's crazy. That's how I know this ends for our slip yoke. Get that old tape off there. And this end's ready to go. Just playing. That's a little crunchy too. Nice, custom two-piece clip on that one. Let's take this to the press. Get that one out, kinda. I don't understand why these just kinda come out. We can't get them all the way out. I mean, it ain't nothing we're doing. It's just bottoming them out on the, on the body of this thing. I'm a professional cleaner tool. Super rare tool right there, hard to find, hard to get. VIPs only. Here's our new U-joint, which is surely to perform better than them old crunchy ones. Here's our new clips. Now there's a rule for how you put your grease zert, but I cannot remember what the rule is. I think for this one, we'd want it facing forward because this is gonna go into the rear end. So instead of looking up, we'll just guess because that makes perfect sense. A couple of taps. No, no. Careful with the taps. Then knock the needles out. And just shove that cap in there real easy. Let's shove this first side in. Over far enough, I think we can get a clip started. That's beautiful. Next, slide that U-joint over some where we can get this one started. Making sure it's on all the needles. That feels good. And then we just shove that on over. Red Rover, Red Rover, come on over. socket give it a little extra where we can get the clip right there clip is in but clip is not spread back out not as much as it should anyhow It's 
so close. Well, that worked hitting it in like that after pressing on it some more. That's a tight fit though. Can't say I'm a huge fan of that. I mean, it moves, but it should be looser than that. I wonder if them new clips are too thick. When you're dealing with tight tolerances, uh, that right there could be the difference. Maybe a little thicker. See that? I can't even squeeze them out of there. I mean, I just had to beat them in there. I mean, that ain't perfect, but that's definitely better. Put them old clips in there. There we go. Nope, it was better before. I'm trying to find the sweet spot where it frees it up a little bit. There, that's better. Not as good as I want, but I'm assuming it's the awesome tolerances on these U-joints here. I can tell by the oversized clips, nice and tight tolerances. I found it, I found it. Uh, boy, you're lucky I didn't want to drop y'all. If I would have actually hit you with that, you're going to be picking yourself up off the ground for another week. I didn't want to give up, so I gave it, I think I was hitting it too hard. I basically just gave it a little like, like that back and forth. And look, I found the sweet spot. That's as sweet as that one's going to get, guaranteed. I grabbed our uh, long bed drive shaft because this slip yoke's in better shape. And indeed, to get the slip yoke off there, after you shove the one out, you just gotta put the one cap back in and shove it out the other way, uh, and then it'll come off there. Now, we just need to get the cap out of here for good. About like so, and we can clean this up real quick, then we're gonna start going back together. Press our new one in. Hopefully we do a little better job on this one. These clips are garbage, guys. They're, it's just too tight. It's shoving them out of both sides. Dinner's ready. Swap to the old clips, no problem. What the devil's going on with this thing? Put it in just like our other ones. Put a clip on this side, go to this side. That's about as far as it wants to go and that ain't even close to getting a clip in there. And you may notice that's rusty. That's because as I was pressing the new one, it cracked. So then I thought maybe I had a needle off or something that was keeping it from going. So I pulled it apart, used the best old one, old cap I could find. And I'm trying to go back together with it. And it's doing the same thing. So I don't know what we have going on here. I don't know why uh, this yoke ain't working for this U-joint. Gave her some love in the vise again and something did a little pop noise. And I thought we actually cracked the cap, but no, whatever decided to give gave us a little. I can almost get the freaking clip in, except not all of it. It keeps kind of popping out here. Hoping for the right impact will give us our last little hair we need. And I should have showed you guys before I took this one apart, how this clip won't full go in. It actually had one like that. That don't mean I want to leave it like that. Oh, I do believe we're in. What a battle this has turned into. Oh yeah, she's going, I think. That sucker's in. See if we can smooth her up a little bit.
couple love taps to get the pressure off that one that back there is happy guys i do not know why that was so hard uh now i know i'm a little rough at it but i i think the tolerances were too tight on them u-joints that i bought uh so i don't know what a good brand u-joint is but next time i go to mess with one i'm gonna ask for a better brand u-joint i'm honestly surprised we got that back together without breaking nothing i mean that is tight tight as can be and i did use the old clips as well guarantee if we use them new clips ain't no chance in hell that was going together pop that end in i was a little luby on it okay probably should replace that seal but we'll just see if it leaks and go from there hmm interesting very interesting that's bottomed out which means we should be able to get past that and then slide back in except that sucker's pretty well maxed out and even if that that's about where it needs to be so we wouldn't have no slack at all All we need to do is take the gas tank off, disconnect everything else we did, cut the frame in half again, and make it the correct length. Just playing, guys. Uh, now, our flip kit brackets, they got offset holes in them, and I favored it so the rear end would be forward, and maybe those are supposed to be to push it backwards. I'm going to try to do a little thinking. I'm not sure what in the devil is going on. I loosened the mute bolts and checked, and I was wrong. I actually offset that towards the rear, which I put thought into, so I don't know why I forgot that. As you can tell, she's still furry. It's because we're about to look at a couple things. And instead of pulling those to see, I could have simply looked at our leaf spring and you can see where the saddle used to sit and now you can see how it's offset towards the rear. The only thing is, obviously freeing that up seemed to help. Uh, those holes are wallered out, so I don't know if it was still shifted forward, uh, but I pulled back on the rear end and then I could get the drive shaft in. Up here we've got probably five eighths of an inch or so and that should be plenty for our up and down. We can look at that. Uh, after we get her sat down with some weight on it just to make sure it ain't shoving it too far forward You don't want that you'll break your transmission I'm gonna pull this rear end as far back as it'll go on them bolts and snug all this stuff back down You've seen me do that about 12 times now, so you don't need to watch that Woo! Got some extra weight on the back since we ain't got a bed got jack stands underneath there this is kind of like it actually sitting on the ground. That gets everything where we need it, where we can tighten that down. On the front, I got the jack stands out at the furthest point on the control arm, shoving all of it up. And right now is a good time to go tighten up all this crap. It's also a good time to try to wiggle underneath here and look at our uh, slip yoke. Hey, there we go. Uh, apparently doing that as that cycles up, takes it backwards, because we got all kinds of extra there now. In fact, you can see it's right at where the old rusty line was. Can y'all see that? So I think we're sitting pretty. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna go around and just get all these. Zip, zip, zip. Tightened up the other side. Now sit her down on the ground. Hey, little lowrider. The little turd that could. Underneath the hood, we got some unfinished business. Here's our retaining bolt. That retaining bolt goes right there. And by golly, it's going right into place. Man, what did we do to deserve all that, huh? Don't make it too easy on me. Ah, so close. My dad got me this little uh, socket set thing for it can go on like all thread or whatever it's just too beefy to actually get down past that rag joint i only found like one 
use for this thing so far. And that time I used it, it saved my butt. I was hoping this would be one of them cases. A thousand baby turns later, we're getting somewhere. Oh, that's tight. Ask my aching elbow. Ain't going nowhere. Ugh, tight down line number one. Ooh, I'm excited, guys. One of our local schools, they always do a turkey dinner every year. And that's tonight. And uh, it's pretty good. My wife said she's getting ready before too long to go pick it up. That means we're eating good. Eating good in the hood, baby. Line number two. Safe to say she's a little thirsty. So we'll use the end crack funnel and see if we can't just fill that up. Oh, yeah, we filled it up. Filled up the intake. Filled up the timing chain cover. Filled up the belts. She's flowing out the top. Don't worry about that. <laughs> little mess never hurt, did it? <laughs> Hardly noticeable. That'll help it disappear. Next, we're gonna take a look at our master. Oh yeah, that's to get a rusty one right there. I don't wanna break free. I'm actually gonna hit it that way and tighten it just a hair. I do think it moved. And then look, pop it that away and it'll free up. I don't know why. Tightening it first always seems to help. He's a long reach on that. That's one way to do it. This is just the old classic swap one for one. Try another nut there. Not sure what's going on. And don't look crooked. Huh. What do we do? Bugger a thread on that one somehow? Somehow. Like I didn't just have a half inch impact in my hand. <laughs> Go for a little thread cleaning action. Start it by hand this time. Much better. <laughs> All right, master cylinder is on. Install another set of the old blue bombers. And I sat her back down. Guys, I've been trying and trying. I was hoping to get everything wrapped up today. But sometimes stuff just don't go like you want it to go. Like that drive shaft whipping me. Uh, now that being said, I've got two things I want to accomplish. And it's going to be ready to drive. One, we need to hook up from our fuel pump to our hard line. That's now hooked up to our new tank. We've never ran off an actual tank on this truck. And then two... Uh, we're gonna have to bleed the brakes. Uh, now that turkey dinner I told you about, it's gonna be ready in about 10 minutes. But I also need to hook my truck to the trailer because me and Puddin' Pops is going to Texas tomorrow. So I reckon I'm gonna have to get out here Saturday morning to wrap this thing up. Everything is going wrong. That's what's going on this morning. Like the door just locked somehow. Now to unlock. Perfect. Close great that time. <laughs> I thought I was going to get out here this morning. Whoa. What's clanking? Uh, I uh, simply put a fuel pump on, which I did. That only took about, I say fuel pump, I meant fuel filter. You know, 10 minutes. Throw the new hoses on up front and filter on. Uh, then I was like, oh, I will very simply bleed the brakes. And let's just say nothing about that was very simply. Uh, I'll go over it in a minute of what it took. 
and we're braking but it don't feel the best the brakes feel broke being as low as it is it rides pretty good though and i think with a little weight on the uh, back it's actually gonna ride better took her for a quick rip around the neighborhood and uh yeah she rides pretty good for being as low as she is i just know that from my driveway because i drive enough lowered stuff i can already tell which one's gonna ride decent and uh which ones suck and this is not terrible oh did y'all hear that like we're getting into some fender stops like a wood wheeled wagon yeah terrible brakes don't hit that because uh that don't matter anymore by the way yeah as i went to uh, fire it up and pull it out that decided to break which is awesome it was smoking more than i remembered but the smoke has seemed to clear up some I must be rubbing on some fender wheel up in there a little bit no big deal but hey she is uh running and driving has a short uh short wheel base which is nice and i hate to complain about a free truck but that thing just plum frustrated me this morning uh when i went to bleed the brakes guys i used my vacuum sucker was trying on the front couldn't get any fluid going at all so i hopped to the rear ones it pulled uh, vacuum, pulled the fluid immediately. Just whoop, filled the system. Where are you ready for a couple little bleed offs with the foot? The old school squeak, 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 bleed it off. You know what I mean? So I hop back to the front and I'm pulling vacuum. I'm pulling vacuum. And usually if it don't pull good, that's indicating you got a leak somewhere because it's pulling air from somewhere else. So I checked everywhere and I'm like, there ain't no dang leak. I, uh, I pulled the line off at the master cylinder and I put air pressure to it and pressured up the whole front brake system and check for leaks. No air leak nowhere. And then I come over to a bleeder and put air on it and pushed air up through the hard line right to the master cylinder. The master cylinder itself from sitting there with fluid in it had gravity bled itself so it was sitting there bleeding so it ain't air locked like I know someone was probably thinking or gonna suggest. So I put it all back together. I can shove air all the way up through there. Uh, I pull vacuum again and I just cannot get fluid. And I was about giving up. Oh, I took the old lid for the master cylinder, drilled a hole in it, hooked up a piece of hose to it and put air pressure to it, trying to pressurize from the top down. And I couldn't tell I was getting any at all. And I finally just asked uh, someone in the house to come help me, KK come help me just try to do the old school manual bleed the brakes. She pumped it like three, four times and on the very first one on the front, when I cracked it open, just straight fluid. Now, how does that make sense, anyone? I never had to top off the master cylinder because it didn't look like it was dropping. I mean, I, I did a little bit because I messed with it for like an hour and a half, but I thought it was just from me splashing fluid. I never seen it significantly drop from just pulling fluid. Anyhow, uh, we went around and bled them and obviously it's got brakes. It ain't feeling right though, uh, but it's feeling like it don't got power brake so we may have a bad booster and after driving it around a little bit it probably would not hurt to bleed them uh puppies one more time uh maybe with someone a little stronger with a little bit more foot who's gonna give it a little more pressure uh, but that got us running and driving so i hopped in there to fire it up there's a dirt clod or a dirt dauber nest come to find out on top of the intake so when i pump the gas it rolled in along it and wedged it and this baby started revving to the moon so i had to try to kill it and run out there and pull that and then so i got it situated topped off for fluids went to hop in there to back it up to show it to y'all and the damn key cylinder thing broke in there they didn't even so yeah i had to hot wire it <laughs> to get it started to pull it out here to show you guys so my real quick hour of I'm gonna go throw on a fuel filter. I'm gonna bleed the brakes, pull it out, show it to them because we got a busy day and I was supposed to be done about an hour and a half ago. Uh, is already, yeah, and everything's going good around here. Look at this poor shop. It looks like a mess and a half. Most of that mess just happened in the last two and a half hours I've been out here. But hey, she's running. Like I said, smoke's cleared up a little bit, which is good. That gauge does work up there. She's staying about a buck 80, which is running cool. Power steering's whining a little bit. I'm sure after doing some steering, we need to actually top it back off. Uh, but our drive shaft working. All of our brakes back here. I don't, I ain't seen any le leaks yet. After I did get them bled, I ain't found no leaks. That's good considering we built all that back there. And guys, it just seems to be working. Do a 
burn out to make you feel better and then rev it up so you can just squeak them belts and everything and show the true power she's making. I think you want to make a good truck for us. You are being a little deceitful here and I can't tell what's really going on between us. Can't truly tell if you like me or not. How about a nice clean rev? Oh yeah. So that's it guys. Uh, it is what it is. Didn't get as far as I wanted, but hey, we tried our best. Uh, it's got new brakes that don't work the greatest. Awesome, new brake lines. All kinds of good stuff going on it. Uh, we've made pretty good progress on this truck in the last couple weeks. And yeah, we just need a little more progress. <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. We got a Facebook page and nothing very active on there. Uh, Puddinsfabshop.com for that good quality merchandise. And what else? What else? What else? The only thing last to say, the only thing left to say is what's always last to say. And that is sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys in the next one.